thanks for downloading this tutorial on marked cards. I've put a lot of time and effort into this system. I think I've gotten it the best you can possibly get without purchasing a marked deck. You should avoid a lot of detection with this, and you should have a lot of fun with memorized decks. Included in this download is a little PDF with a uh, printable version of the chart I use that you can memorize. It's fairly easy to catch on. There's a little bit of memorization, but it's fairly self-explanatory. I spent a lot of time working on and streamlining this uh, system of marking cards, and I think it's pretty good. Uh, you'll find a lot of uses for it. Uh, cheating at cards, probably number one. Uh, I do a great memorized deck routine. I'll teach that in this video. Anything else when you want to know a card without looking at it. So uh, sit back, relax, grab a sharpie and a deck of cards. Enjoy. <laughs> So this is a very simple setup for uh, marking a deck of cards in a professional way that will keep you undetected and very streamlined in the way that you can discern the identity of a playing card without looking at it. You will need uh, three things really, deck of playing cards, sharpie marker, dead slice of tree, and some time to kill. Let me first say that this is a time commitment. You should have between 45 minutes or an hour straight to sit, no interruptions, and do this. It takes a long time. I'm going to include a time lapse of me doing it for purposes because I need a new marked deck. And I've never made a time lapse before. But that will be greatly sped up and you should not be able to do it in the amount of time I do it in the time lapse because that's physically impossible and you would be speeding up incredibly fast and that would be a magic trick in its own. Red cards work so much better than blue cards. Uh, for one, the Sharpie is the perfect shade when you're doing with a red card, and it is a little bit too dark on a blue card. I don't have an example to show you because I've never made more than one blue marked deck because I made one and realized it was horrible and never made another one. But don't make blue marked decks with bicycle backs. If you want to invent a, uh, another design for a different back, uh, go for it, and that's great that sharpie would have to be better because if you can find a marker that matches the bicycle back please email me i will include my email between my hands and i want you to let me know because that would be incredible but for now red sharpie red bicycle back beautiful marked deck Short little side note, black bicycle cards, if you can find them, I have a couple decks, if you can find them, they work so much better than red, because black sharpie, black back, it's undetectable and not racist at all. It uses a the rectangle at the very top of the bicycle card. It's a wheel, eight spokes per se around it and a circle in the middle and also the flower type shape directly to the right of it looking at it on an actual bicycle card you can see the wheel is here the flower is here and once you know where to look it's pretty distinguishable okay so this is the actual numerical counting this is two this is three four five six, seven, and eight. Nine is in the center, and that's all the numbers. Ten is two on top, garden, and that's a ten. Getting into the face cards, Getting into the face card, a king is in an X shape, a queen is in a horizontal line, and a jack is in a diagonal slash across the wheel. Aces are simple, it's simply bottom, middle, top, all in a line. The suits are relatively simple, they follow this guideline. Clubs are the bottom left, hearts are the top left, diamonds are the top right, spades are the bottom right. This uh, direction coincides with the bubble that is colored in on the back of the card itself. So that is a however poorly drawn overview 
of the entire system. Uh, you'll kind of see this as uh, I'm about to mark a full deck all the way. Um, but kings are extremely e easy to distinguish. Tins and aces are similar, however, between the, cir the center circle colored in. And uh, for some reason, queens and jacks, in my head, I confuse. But you, if you remember, queen has a diagonal line in it, just like jack. And so queen is not the slash. So you can think about it, you're slashing the queen out. It's not that. Like, I don't know if that'll be a problem with you. It's a problem with me. But I've been using the system for so long, I cannot go back and change that. I would mess up every single time. I'm going to mark a deck for you right now, uh, sped up time. So that was me making a uh, March deck. Uh, now you should have somewhere on your writing surface, desk, table, a jumbled mass of cards that looks like this. So what do you do with them now, you ask? Well, you can pick them up and use them as a normal deck. I've gone to parties where the only thing I've had on me were rubber bands, a couple coins, an invisible deck, and a March deck. And I've entertained people for hours. I'm telling you, this is all you need, really. The applications that I'm going to get into in a second with this are just absolutely limitless. There's nothing you can't do. Even if you're not a magician and you want to use this video and you just want to cheat your friends out of money, go ahead. <laughs> so here you go. Here are a couple tips and tricks to go with your new Mark deck. Uh, things you can do are, if you know a good snap chain, so you can just kind of peek the card at the top, figure it out, pull a card in the middle, say, now what if this was a six of hearts, and then it becomes a six of hearts. That's That can be done with a snap change, a, uh, if you control the top to the bottom, bird knaves. Really, you can do anything you want. Uh, you can, um, I play a game, actually, kind of go fish-esque thing, you, where you would shoot cards onto a table of some sort and uh, you would have someone take a finger and touch one and you would drag it aside you would pick up the rest of the cards fan them straight out and look through and see hmm feels like there's a two of spades missing and that's their card and it's just kind of memory demonstration uh, you can go through the entire deck like that and say I've got it and just without changing any order of the deck Tell me when to stop, right there, and then kind of weigh, this is what I do this a lot, weigh, mm, 29 cards, so if I count back in my head, the 30th card, I think, I think that was a six of clubs, am I right? And that's all you gotta do. Uh, note on special cards, jokers, nothing on the back, jokers have no marking whatsoever, you do this because if someone starts to get suspicious, hand them a joker. Uh, Hold it up against a light, put it against a window. I've had people smell cards. Smell them. There's nothing to find on the Joker. Uh, I used to do it where you would have Ace of Spades, would have no markings. And you would hand them that. But then again, that's a conspicuous card. If you would really like, you can take any random card out of, out of the deck, just think about it a lot, and not have any markings on it. That's doable. So if you just knew in your head, Six of Clubs has no markings and you just, this card has nothing on it, that's the Six of Clubs. Instead of looking through it and having the marking for a Six of Clubs, you would just have nothing there. Quick note on making the, uh, the setup for marking the deck before you mark it. It is not necessary for the deck to be in order. It greatly helps you. But it's always good. You'll see me as I make the uh, deck. You'll see me checking every single card. Always, always, always good to check. I've done it where uh, one single card was off in a suit, and so three quarters of the deck, or a four of clubs was a five of clubs, a three of clubs was a four of clubs, and so on. And I ended up 
I mean, I couldn't use the deck for anything because I would subconsciously look at the marking and say this was a three of clubs when it was actually a four. And uh, you don't want that to happen. It's uh, really, really bad. And you waste a whole deck of cards uh, unless you want to just use it without markings. Quick note on mistakes. See this right here? This is supposed to be an ace of clubs. I bled it over accidentally. And um, it's not the end of the world. If you make a mistake while you're drawing a marking on a card, do not panic and do not wipe it. That is more important. If, you, uh, if you're drawing a 10 and you accidentally color in a 2, like the marking for a 2 instead of the top one, do not panic and do not lick your finger and wipe it. It will not come off. All it will do is smear. The only thing you can do, take that, uh, the card that you messed up on, throw it away. Keep, or keep it for another trick that you need a duplicate for or something. But then take a older deck that's not discolored yet, because sometimes if you're using an old deck and a new deck, the discoloration and the white side will make people seem like something's wrong. So take a newish deck, the same card, and remark it as to fit in with your marked deck, and you're totally fine. You can do this however you'd like. You can draw a little, uh, a little marking on the back of the box, but I've found the best way to catalog marked decks and unmarked decks is right here on the front of the box. If you go right at the top of the spade, just make a little tiny dot right there. Uh, it doesn't impact the design of the box, it's not noticeable, but if you know what you're looking for, you can look at a box, look at a box and say that's marked, that's not. So if you had multiple decks in your pocket, in one pocket, you could pull out an unmarked deck, have people inspect it, and then pull out a marked deck afterwards, and you would know the difference. And that's a lifesaver if someone knows what they're actually looking for. Whenever I pull a marked deck out, I always like to check the top card. What it is in this case, it's a queen of spades. So if I wanted to uh, have any sort of routine start right there, I could pull out any card, always convinced that it's a single card, pirouette, flicker, whatever you want to do. And then if you're going to spin change, you could say with a convincing, oh, well, this is actually a queen of spades. And then by ditching the second card, you can end very clean. I found by far the most convincing trick with this is giving the deck a shuffle. And having the spectator, if I had one, give the deck a shuffle. And then simply ribbon spreading the cards. And you can notice if you fan it wide enough, you can actually see the marking on the card that far out, so you already know what that one is. But these are more condensed, and so you don't see those. But what you, but you, what you do is you do this on a floor, or on a table, or something. Anything like that. And you, you, would, uh, you would come up to the spectator, you would memorize, air quotes, the deck vertically, like that, and then spread it, just like that, and you say, all right, so take your finger and touch any card. It's really important that you say touch, don't say pick, just say touch. All right, so touch any card and keep your finger on it, and so let's say this one, and, just, and then so what you do is with your hand, you're going to take that and just drag it back in the action of picking the rest of the cards up. So if I have that out again, let's say, all right. Pick that up, and as you're doing that, do not break eye contact with where you marked. So right now I know for a fact that is a seven of hearts, and then I will pick it up towards the spectator, have them look at it, put it back down, replace this on top, and close the deck. So in their mind, there's absolutely no way that you know that card. You never saw it. It was never picked up while your eyes were looking at it. However, you have that information now, and now you can use that. You can do mentalism. You can look into their eyes and guess it. Really, the possibilities are endless. Um, cheating in card games is excellent as well. And there's really nothing you can't do with these. That's really it for me. Um, if you have any comments whatsoever as to my teaching or any suggestions for the method itself, feel free to comment or email me or um, come to my house, whatever. Thanks again for downloading and uh, giving me your time and a, uh, a spare deck of cards that you had. Um, I really hope that you find this worthwhile and a uh, 
good addition to your collection. Uh, I use it almost every time I do magic, and I hope you will too. I'm Trey Taylor, and I need a creative way to end videos.